Alright, we're back to our Opus 15 violin tuning the back plate using the modified Big Dorchik uh, tuning strip method. And we're just completing the um, strip number 11. One, two, three, and it's a little too low, so this area, the last three quarters of an inch, is going to be um, what we're going to be slightly removing wood from to raise the whole strip. Okay, so. Try to scrape evenly across the strip here. Okay, now go across the strip and see how even it is. In the middle, it's not quite as high as it is on the other side, so let's see if I can scrape. middle of the strip a little bit. Okay, now let's check the overall tone. Here's 198. Go a little bit higher. Sounds a little higher. Go a little lower. Sounds a little lower. So I'd say we bracketed. Alright, so from here to here, all this is even now. It's lower, it's higher. It's 198. So you can tell this is a bit low. Okay, let's move our don't go below this line piece of tape over. Oops, to keep our bearings. The new end of the strip we're tuning tape. Right. Let's move right up against the end block and take our old strips off. I say with the right tool everything is easy and without the right tool sometimes things are really hard okay so we're going to tap along the strip Sounds real even in this area. And only as you go up the hill here that it uh, increases in tone. So, see if we can't figure a way to scrape that. There's a highest at the top, so. I'm going to kind of take her down here a little bit. We might be able to do that too with a little sandpaper block. Some fresh sandpaper. Just on the slash a little bit. Five eighths of an inch or so. Okay, let's see how we did. side with the center bout is attached. We would mark our approximately three quarters of an inch. That's the area we're going to remove a little bit of material from. 
Okay. So you can sneak in there. Got a good ways to go. I try this with our sandpaper too. Just away from the strip just below that we've already tuned. Kind of a back and forth kind of movement here. See how we're coming. So we're still about a one, one and a half hertz low, so we're getting close. And let's see how even we are across. Looks like the side or the bottom could go up just a little bit, so I'll scrape a little extra there. sandpaper to that. Alright, see how it's even it is across the strip. Okay, and we'll check. This is our 198 goal. A little above, a little low. So it seems to be bracketed. 198. All right, so I'm moving right along to the penultimate strip. And the strips are getting shorter, and that's probably going to make these go a little faster. Maybe. And we're going to start to come out in the open, too, which will be helpful. Comes out. Okay. So one, two, three, four. So this is number thir 13. Because the this strip is actually all one and has a dotted line down the middle, making 13 total. But because we're counting that as two now, so it's 14 altogether. So. Right in here is uh, a little bit higher than the rest. Well, I'm just going to scrape along here. And keep from going below the line in the area you've already tuned. Only about a half a hertz. Again, beside what this nearest the center bounce area to raise it. 
that's just the end here. So let's take a few light. Um, get in there so close. It, Sandpaper in there too. It's really like a little. Okay, now we're down to the last little, this area will be sure that's even. This is to raise it, and this is to lower it, so. Pretty even, let's see where it is. So it's about 196 and a half. So we need to raise it slightly, and that's just a little tiny area in here that we want to adjust. And again, let's see if we can put a scraper in there. I think we have pretty much accomplished our goal. So the center tap now matches the rest of the instrument, rest of the plate all over. And the top plate, which is at 197. Sounds neither higher nor lower than the rest of the back. They, they're different frequencies, but they sound like they belong together. And they're going to be singing together, so we'd like that to, to match. So basically, um, I think the uh, back plate's done. We just need to erase our lines, which I'll do next. And because I've uh, removed the uh, maker's label, I'm just going to, again, with uh, this Uniball with permanent black ink, I'm just going to write my label in with the, you know, the name and the uh, date and uh, the name of the violin and so on, just as if it was on a label. And that way I'm not adding any wood fiber to throw the tone off. Overtones change, but the basic tone is where we want it. Okay, the Opus 15. I'd say, to the best of my knowledge, that back is tuned as <laughs> best that I know how. And we'll see how the results are when we get down here. Now, before we uh, close the instrument back up, I'm going to I'll tune the ribs. We'd like those to be a match at the top. And we'll see if we can find, if there's any high spots, we can lower it a little bit by scraping inside. And then I'm going to put two coats of propolis on the ribs and on the inside of the back, and then Dutch rush twice. Dutch rush. 
and uh, that'll give an acoustic advantage. And you'll see I'm going to do a sound test. I'll do half, uh, and then the other half I won't we'll compare the two in the loudness of the two taps. And um, then I'll do the whole thing. Then we'll be ready to reassemble. Okay. Back plate of Opus 15, and Dave Langsather. Hope it's uh, useful information for you.